Of course I wasn't. How could I be? Back to another video by oh, yours. I am live right see? now. Chat, say hi to YouTube. We're going to be reacting to the latest and greatest Honkai Star Rail tournament that I uh, participated in along with EO. EO was my partner. We went against God, Doggo, and Moon. And I want to provide a little bit of context before we get into the tournament so that you guys have a good understanding with regards to uh, the band phase, uh, the rules, and you know all the specifics so you can understand the value of each team composition, why we chose them how things turned out and yada, yada, yada. YouTube, I wanna go over the point system of Pride Win. This is pretty much designed to keep like spending in check, pay to win variables in check. So if you're going up against somebody in the tournament and they have like, I don't know, E5 characters or whatever, generally the the, the comment section and the feedback's gonna be, well, of course that team won. They, they had these, you know, high invested characters, whereas, whereas the other team, you know, they was, they was mint picking, so to speak. Uh, also, shout out to Hoyaverse for sponsoring this video and sponsoring this tournament and enabling me to bring this to y'all's y'all's attention. But yeah, let's go ahead and go over some of this stuff, the point system rules so that it makes sense. Each team gets 30 points to spend on five star characters. We're right here, by the way. Signature light cones, their super impositions, and their eidolons. All five star characters chosen cost two points. So no matter the five star character, bare minimum, two point cost. Higher super impositions and eidolons cost a variety of additional points depending on their power level. Uh, four star characters, light cones and herta uh, store light cones do not cost points, right? Four star characters, light cones and herta store light cones do not cost points. I think eidolons do though, but some stronger four star characters do cost points. For every six points under 30, a team's final total is they have one total cycle subtracted off their score. So for every six points under 30, you get star? one that cycle counts. subtracted off your total cycle. So let's say you have a five cycle clearage, right? But you have 12 points under the 30 point threshold. Now you have a three cycle clearage. Does that make sense? That's important to take into consideration too. For every two points over 30, an additional cycle is added to your final score. So this is where the whales and the spenders start taking L's. So if you have 34 points, your team, your team's investment costs 34 points. That means you lose two cycles, right? So that, that's important too. Here's the next important thing, all right? So four stars, Eidolon E0 to E6, 0.5 points, right? 0.5 points for a four star character, uh, E0 to E6. If you're just a four star with no Eidolons is 0.5, I mean, it's just no points at all. And I think if you go to like closer you are to E6, it's just a 0.5, so whatever. We'll just say, a four star character costs 0.5 points. A five star character at E0 costs two points. A five star character at E1 costs six points. A five star character at E2 costs 10 points. Nobody in this tournament has a, a E2, so we're just gonna stop here. E1 costs six points. That's important to take into consideration. Then we move down here to the light cones. Light cones at four star and herd of store cost zero points, but signature and standard light cones cost two points that's pretty much all we need to uh to know now we can go and look at the tournament and the investment and you guys will understand why i brought this up because it's pretty huge so let's go ahead and uh, go back to the tournament yukon blade sounds rough uh, actually it's not that bad i i recommended it to eo because if you but here's the thing it's very hard if you don't know how to pull off her wombo combo Yukon Blade is not a bad combo, but you have to know how to time her ult with his basic, his ult, and his follow-up attack. And if you time that shit perfectly, it's actually like how he's making some strong combo. Right. I don't think right. it's right. that difficult. So he has 163 speed sparkle. One, side one, we he could have gotten the three turner in if he had the sprightly Von Whack on her. That's that's the first thing I think off rip here. If he had sprightly Von Whack, he at least could have gotten the three turner in on the first cycle. I'm not sure if it would have saved him one. I think it would have been possible. The team of Sparkle, Yukon. And he has a signature light cone. Okay. Oh, we got to tally this stuff up, by the way. So he has. So right now, his Sparkle is E0 with signature light cone. That's four points. Yukon. I'm guessing he's doing this because it's going to matter. Like said, definitely... Wait, go back. I told him Sparkle, I was actually the Yukon, person who tried to get him to Blade. put the, uh, the dance, like the dance on his numbers. Yukon to try and save him, you know, get an extra turn in. And a Lynx. Now, like I said, definitely see the synergy with. But I think he just didn't have enough investment in his team. Lynx in the Let me go back and look at that one more time. Ugh. This is another problem here. Your Yukon can actually pop off on some ult. I talked to him about this as well. 
unfortunately for EO, he just doesn't have Yukong invested in, rightfully so. I, I honestly, I feel him on that. But his Yukong could have done some serious damage if he had an a, a invested Yukong. Like 70 over 120 Yukong can hit can hit pretty goddamn hard. Blade and a lynx now like i said definitely see the synergy with lynx in the okay so this is a four star character so 4.5 points so far for eo blade in this one but the yukong is now blade signature light cone that's another four points in total unless he has e1 blade which i don't think he does that's 8.5 points in total of a misfit to me here can you also that blade is pretty solid bro blade and a lynx now like i said definitely see to me here can you pick anything up from this one yeah that Ruro? blade's pretty solid what was this crit value again 76 over 184 then once the uh, the passive of the set kicks in here can you pick anything up from no i don't know about good numbers yeah for blade. bro his blade is solid because like he's with hp and all that no this but is definitely very it looks good slow speed blade which is fine combination of units vulcan of course yukong known for her massive 80 percent increased attack buff on and that's some free to play friendly ass shit there bro <laughs> So nine points for EO's team in total. Nine points. Her skill, but Blade can't really make use. All right, so we open up, and the first person is gonna be Lynx. That's very interesting to see. What yep. He was Put the HP boost on Blade, off, increasing his aggro and his damage a little bit. Blade increasing his chance to be hit and boost Blade straight up with that sparkle. Sparkle. He is ready yep. To go here. Yeah, definitely. So I'm curious to see what kind of damage we get out of this. So blade. this this run is painful, by the way, guys. There's a lot of RNG revolving around this run being being performed well. You gotta rely on Blade getting hit. First attack, 71. And if you time things correctly, you want Blade to get hit, but you want him to still not trigger his follow-up attack until Yukong's ult is up. Okay, on the cleave. It's quite respectable. So we are gonna get some decent damage. And I'm curious to see what he does with this. So that's Yukong. four. He spam skill and see, that is actually unfortunate. To gain access to that because you wanna save that follow-up for when Yukong's ult is up. You know what I mean? And one of the things that people underestimate about Yukong is the more actions you go, during her uh, her buff, her skills activation, she gets a little bit increments of energy recharge increase. So you can actually fill her ult up and then use it in the same like instance of Blade's full wombo combo. Ult. We got a big 145k follow up there from the Blade. So watch Yukong's energy recharge down here when Lynx goes. Well, with the ultimate ready, but yes. See? Yeah, did you see that? Follow -up attack. Did you see that, bro? You won't get that. That bad boy filled up big time. I'll go back again so y'all can see it. Look, look at this. There from the blade as well with the ultimate ready, but... That's a massive energy recharge increase. So now if he pops Link's ult and heals Blade up, Yukong's ult will be up. And if he did, and if Blade didn't get hit that first time, he could have done a full wombo combo with his blade. Yes, the Yukong is the with the with the Yukong ult. Super curious to see what happens in. So look, now her ult's up. But he doesn't have a follow-up attack. That's what's unfortunate. One. Your slow mo Acheron ults were fine. Yeah, yeah, Absolutely. they're nice. But it see, this like is this is crazy because if you would have had that follow-up attack right here, that would have been a lot of damage. Then should cast but it's an RNG pain in the ass. That's what I'm trying in in EO's defense. Okay, to those ads summoned by that shield man there, and hopefully take out this life leech effect here. Okay, we're going with the ultimate here straight from Yukon. We're going for a big attack here on Blade, and we're gonna smash out that ultimate fully buff. 116. You know, I'm not gonna go to put the sub DPS Yukon. The, like some crit that's stats. Hey, okay, very nice. But, Triggering that MOC. That is hard. Getting that Trotter debuff. Definitely. I'm 81. Yeah, that damage is like. the damage to do it in zero cycles this way, but I definitely think the one cycle is. So Blade only went two times. And he didn't get a follow up attack with the enhanced Yukong buff because Sparkle didn't go three times. So I'll be honest. Yeah, man, it's doable. Perfectly it's safe. just really, it's, you really got to know what you're doing. Enemies down to, but the big man is going to heal himself up with that one. It's not easy, though. I'm telling you guys, this shit is not easy at all. Up. Yukong did get a little bit low on that one, uh, but we're looking pretty fine. And that's the great thing with this team. You can spam as many skills as you want with Yukong and Lynx because you've just got an abundance of them, and Blade doesn't really use too many absolutely a little bit unfortunate we did have Blade to getting hit a lot the though enemy there here. but see another one where yukong's ult is almost up but it right looks like we're gonna get and blade follows combo. up without her, ult or her oh, buff yeah. again full attack, 164k from blade and he does I wonder if he's like a speed just problem. nasty so rng he has to deal with i guess the rng as well like how you get yeah, the let, me, let me move my camera up just a little bit 
and make myself a little bit there we go okay we're gonna get that wind break there and hopefully it'll be triggered by the trotter it is a nice big chunk of damage there can we get it done this cycle low here vulcan we've got another sparkle boost coming up yeah i think the sparkle boost is going to keep us i think safe, eo we played it relatively well though man you know at the end of the day bro do you want to deal with the rng of this shit or do you just want to try and get a realistic clear and i think eo presented this this comp what it's going to achieve on a consistent basis whether we want to use some of these ults or rely entirely on the blade skill because we will not have access to oh he does get the dot trigger so he will get his follow-up here so between the yukong the blade skill and the follow-up we should get the kill and not have to rely on this ultimate so he should be able to get it done it's going to be a little bit tight he is checking where exactly he is at at the moment this is pretty important dog ah because like i said with with good timing guys he could he could have killed these two and then saved his ult and auto for the next wave right which can exp can definitely save a cycle see the damage from this follow-up get it done we do have the horse taking look at this look at this annoying shit we'll be able to finish it off anyway absolutely okay. oh so he getting did save his ult never mind he saved it he still got to save play. it getting nice first cycle done in one cycle is very very good as well sorry the first wave there so dude we're those dot ticks on blade are like quick god tier and set a great time hopefully yeah definitely good poised uh, well poised with the ultimates on yes, i don't really want to save too much because uh, i don't use these characters the um, get blade more healing blade all the time uh and not sure exactly what he's looking for maybe turn so like you know like wait, wait, blade wait, wait, hyper carry nothing too complicated he's not even as complicated as the you combo right there that would have been more damage his blades ult wasn't maxed out what he's the dot he is definitely checking yeah his blades ult is at 7995 He's blade all the time. Uh, Wait, am I tripping? Maybe I'm tripping. Maybe it is capped. Uh, Maybe I'm waffling. Sure exactly what he I feel like he should have healed blade right there with his links. Uh, it doesn't really matter though because he's got abundance of skill points. Get that big ult for 74k into the basic attack for 66. Quite respectable. Need it does 90%, right? Okay. That's why. That's what I was saying. Was that 90% though? Y'all can do the math real quick. I'm not sure. That's why I said maybe I'm tripping. In this one, I would assume absolutely okay the swords are out here and blade very strategic i haven't I seen a real Eo legitimate five charges wombo combo up, between yukong and blade yet perfectly planned by Eo there. Take all his follow-ups have been out of synchronization with yukong yeah, that was yeah. which again yeah. it's not necessarily yeah. eo's fault it's like rng type ordeal and, and a bit of calculation as well things. you're just gonna destroy them with blade also getting that trotter down at the same time was super clutch getting those extra dot applications now we are going to move in yeah, see, this is gr this is grimy, man. This is grimy. To the next cycle, but can we clear it in this next cycle? That is going to be the question. Okay, a very interesting use of Yukong Ultimate here. Ah, oh, you just butchered your Yukong ult, though. Holy shit! Yeah, that, that was, was kind of crazy. Watch. Let me know why he did up next. I'm thinking Yeesh. that you might want to break here or something like that because he did your head and you. It's like I was going to see if anything else was going to happen. Do you think to be a pretty big turn looks like on Blade, wasted. Ultimate available and almost yeah, ready. the biggest problem with this comp is just like yeah, he's, gonna... yeah, he's fucking dealing with Yukong's insanely high uh, uh, skill cap, bro. <laughs> Oh, RNG cap. Didn't queue up the ultimate. Didn't queue it up straight away. Yeah, like, Yukong is so sure wonky, man. He's going for here. Uh, is he gonna save the ultimate? Okay, he mm. is saving the ultimate. Okay, he's trying to queue up his follow up. Maybe Ugh. I'm not too sure. It feels like a lot of wasted energy there. That it must be a bigger brain play than what I can comprehend. Can you see what's going on with that ultimate on Blade? Mm, I think he's maybe waiting for. The ultimate from Sparkle, potentially waiting for that damage boost to try and get a bigger ultimate. That yeah, way, I mean, um, the rotations are completely scuffed at this point. Play. I'm not 100% sure, but that Trotter is getting low here. So we are going to get a pretty big uh, damage burst here on Yang Ching because he already has a wind shear, a bleed, and a burn on him. Definitely. So there is that Sparkle ultimate uh, going in to boost the blade. Does he finish off right 100, here? 100% expect to see that ult come straight away. Unless he's waiting for next I'll be honest with you. This shit is like absolutely... No, okay. There it is. He does get it off. Absolutely doable do with some RNG and some, some timed Yukong ults. How much dot damage do we get? With some timed Yukong ults, it's doable, but... Ugh. Yeah, I don't okay, know. Not too bad on the 58k, but it's not going to be enough to get him down in this. Yeah, but that's the issue with you, The most important thing about this is you have to just. Oh, janky. 
time absolutely. Yukong with well, blades for no reason. Combo. Remaining here, and it does look like we're gonna absolutely get one turn here from Sparkle. But the question is, are we gonna get two turns from Sparkle? And is that going to be enough to take Gangching out here in this very last cycle and get that really fast clear time? And we're not going to get the second sparkle in there. So we it's going to rely on doing this one. We do get the follow-up, which is going to be a big addition. And, and then Yukon's DDD is going to activate, I imagine. 9% left. Can oh. we get it here? Oh, oh and Blade is All right, so, spam that close, heal. so close to that ultimate as well. We're going to pop the Yukong ult. See what we can get out of this damage. Let me turn this over a little bit more. Might be just a little bit short. Go. And that no. energy loss. Oh, there it is. The dance, dance, dance. Yep. I did not the see the DDD. I don't know how we the, the, that, the, the power dance, of dance, DDD dance. is Super insanity. Clutch. Getting in there, allowing Sparkle to boost Blade into this cycle. Going to get the skill. Going to be buffed as well by sparkle and then we're gonna go straight into the alt and that should be a hundred percent enough to get this done okay Ooh, definitely very very nice gonna finish the off and hp boot blade nice here. here we are with all right let's look at this okay so right now as things stand eo three cycle team investment nine points now we have team investment off rip what i see on the screen is four eight twelve four eight twelve and then twelve point five here we go team two side one god doggos running the composition of locha bronya imbibita lune and hanya what do you make of this one grimo i'm looking at twelve point five i am shocked vulcan i highly expected imbibita to be on side two taking on and there's the e1 bronya eight points bronya Eight points of Imbiber Lune and Lorcha. That's sixteen point five points. Sam, but here he is, ready to dominate side one. In addition to that, this team looks pretty rough in terms of skill points. Running Bronya and Imbibitor is no okay. Skill with uh, Hanya off rip. Straight with a Bronya. First time full charge. Hey, what? You don't know Hanya was that? And there's an E1 Bronya. E4. Eight points Bronya. Mm -hmm. I don't know if she does Sam, what she does at the four. Ready to dominate side one. In addition to that, this team looks I mean, let me rough check. in terms of skill points. Running Bronya and Imbibitor is no okay. Skill joke with uh, Hanya off rip. Straight with a Bronya. First time full charge. Huge Imbibitor. That's beautiful. That's yeah, beautiful. Definitely on. Bro got the one point back while doing the full charge. That was nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, nothing too crazy. But uh, gonna get that extra damage out of him. Uh, and yeah, skill points is gonna be the issue. We do have Hanya. RNG. This is what I call RNG luck. Branya getting hit and getting her ult up right here. Massive. Massive. To alleviate, but we do have to play around with it very carefully uh, to make sure we don't run out of skill points. Three points Before gave him back. Very nice. To try and generate an extra one along the way. So here we go. Hanya ult. Bro, that speed, speed boost up. is I insane. I don't think he's going to be too effective here on the Imbibitor Lune. All right. He's not going to overlap the Bronya. Oh, wait. Did the E1 proc? I think he's going to be too The E1 proc on Bronya? It did. He's not gonna did, not point. did not did not consume a skill point. Did not consume a skill point. buffing him beyond belief with all these buffs and hopefully that's massive for uh in Bible Lune. Lune. we can get some massive damage just trying to choose his primary target uh on whether he wants to try and kill the ads or not or focus down this horse looks like we're going to be going for the horse just taking time to the side looking at the break bars i think because we can break I was waiting on Christmas with the Hanya on the next turn. If we do go the horse, but we go to just hit everything. We do have the alt three 246 K skill. We're getting that alt. Now, is it an E2 Imbibitor? That's what I'm not sure. And that's what two we bro. Hanya is so good with Imbibitor Lune. Wow. This is nice. I like this. Hanya. So I mean, we knew it, right? We knew it, but damn two point. Another point given back to, to him right during here. his ult. No, it is not. No, but oh my goodness, how is this Bronya getting another turn? She's already had two. And then, and then Lorcha is showing his value, which we knew he's best in slot healer for Bible Lune outside of Scooby-Doo. But like, yeah, Scooby-Doo is better. But still, Lorcha's skill point funneling, you cannot sleep on it from Bible Lune. Getting a third one. Is this going to be a zero cycle wave one? This is just a pure hot wheel. Did that act? Did, what, did he activate Bronya's shit again? Or no? 
This is just oh no, okay. It didn't activate that time. It didn't Ronya activate that time. Taking another one, and I think we can get this done. Massive hundred. And winning the 50, 50 on Rune every time. Oh, Bobby Rune went three times, crazy. didn't he? My goodness, if Bobby Rune really very nice. Which I mean, that's that's worth a 50. E1 has right? a cooldown, does it? I'm not sure. We only have two. I don't have E1, Bobby Rune. Attack here on Hanya. If we do, we're gonna have to take a turn off from Bobby Rune. A very tough call. Yeah, definitely, because you need to spend that point to get one back. So it puts you in that awkward situation. Two-turn cooldown? Okay, gotcha. On this team to generate some extra skill points, but it's just not going to be enough uh, for what we need to do. So Good curious heal. to see if we use the Bronya basic here into triple uh, Imbibitor. All right, here we go. Okay. Bronya's about to... Well, it definitely looks like he's probably going to auto-attack right here. Is he gonna... going to... for a skill, potentially. I mean, Bronya does have her ultimate almost available. Uh, so maybe we'll get an extra skill point from that. I haven't been really I would probably auto-attack okay, here. I'll be honest with you. Basic, mm, it's a very I'm, tough call. I'm thinking two points. Nah, you got auto attack here, big dog. Get basics to play, then you can do a triple stacked in Bibita, and then absolutely her next turn up quicker. But that's yeah, an auto, bro. A pickle, that is not, the yeah, there you go. It does get her ultimate. Okay, there we go. We get a triple stack on the Imbibitor Lune. That is the safe play because then we're going to generate another skill point from the Hanya skill. Then we're going to generate another one from Lochi using his basic attack. And then we can use the Bronya skill into Imbibitor Lune on the next turn. So I'm not too sure whether he's thinking about going for the Trotter there. I or would hash like that ult. I wouldn't uh, use it just yet. Imbibitor's ultimate up as well. Probably going to wait for the next Bronya turn to get that buff and the ultimate buff before we use that ultimate. Well, absolutely. I mean, you could really use it right now, time here but really I think I'd hostage it. Points. It's not easy playing this team. Absolutely not. Going to invest that skill point here in Hanya. Now we are Hanya old up again. Nice. Hanya old up again. Here. Oh we my God, that was RNG again. <laughs> Holy. A skill point here in Hanya. Bro, now he hit Hanya and filter. Hold up. In a oh, situation that's beautiful. Here, we're gonna, are we gonna use Bronya's skill here? Because if we do, we still won't have enough skill points. I mean, that's crazy. Because I'm pretty sure they have to do this like first time, right? Well, he gets a skill back. From, uh, I don't know what to say. Uh, okay, this is like, I don't use these characters. And... He's gonna get a skill back by attacking this person. He can attack the person with Imbiber to Lune ult, get a skill back, and get two charges. He can do this. And if Bronya's stuff is off cooldown, it's even better. So skill, ult, he's good to go. Tough call. I don't know how copium this is, but could he perhaps use Hanya on Yep, Bronya look at that, look at that speed, speed boost. To get her like an Dude, turn the through RNG cycle. of this okay, run is insane. Copium. I didn't know the speed sinking. I thought maybe it could be a thing, uh, but it looks like we are just going to go play it safe. Ult. Using it on Imbibida. Ooh. And then Bronya if Bronya would have been able to auto attack and still get inside the cycle, that would have been nasty work. He's once again, probably going to have to basic. Nah. I don't no, see a way. she doesn't have to basic. No, she doesn't. Volk, that went over your head, brother. Pop ult. But being at a zero, Pop I assume it is or e1 skill we've got to make our decision you're good I to go using the bronya ult is the play but even with he basic i don't think we actually we can basic with bronya yep oh because we would yeah why not just ulti first because you're gonna do it anyway so. why didn't he fucking pop ult the luck the the e1 trigger yeah yeah no the e1 trigger is insane but why didn't he just pop ult would have got the extra skill point from the alt on Imbibitor Lune, which then would have had us at three skill points to allow Imbibitor to use the three point uh, basic. All right, here so he is. He's about to get a skill point back from ult. Damage we do get out of this ult, but that this was a, I think that was a misplay. A tricky team to play with managing these skill points. Absolutely, but two points that we did have. I don't think it's gonna matter because I don't think he lost it just there. It is, yep. An extra skill Some point energy on Bronya gets an extra turn on Lune by using it now. So I think this is either an S1 Bronya or an E1 Bronya there because we were able to get out of that pickle there pretty easily, which is absolutely fantastic here. Making use of those Eidolons on Bronya or the signature, I wasn't paying. She went up in action order, but definitely getting. Does he have four piece hacker space? He yeah, probably does. Oh, so he's probably. Squamish, thanks for saying. Okay, that would make sense. I see what you're. I see, I see what you're putting down now. I'm picking yeah, it up. I don't know where that bonus skill point. I'm picking from, it up. Maybe I just wasn't paying enough attention, but that is. I want to watch that again. Actually, hold up. I want to watch that again because that that if that's the case that was huge. Actually, we can basic with Bronya. Ooh, because we would have got the extra skill points. Oh, the, the hacker space put his Bronya in front of Yang King. Three skill points. It did. Look, look, look. To use the three. Put it in front. Put her in front of uh, Yang King. Basic. So curious to see here how much damage we. Nice. 
Extra sanct squamous thanks for sack day. If I could try and look at this Hanya, look at this Hanya Lorcha combo. The name of it. Two skill points generated. Blah, yeah, blah. I don't know where that bonus skill point came from, or maybe I just wasn't paying enough attention. But that is super solid. We did. Oh, get the oh he's saving it for. for okay. On the it's important that Imbiber de Lune is the one who triggers Hanya's uh, skill point generation because he gets a damage bonus from doing it. De Lune, which is mm. absolutely fantastic. But like I said, yep. there's so many things to manage in this team composition to try and get it done. Uh, and from the most of it, you should just like kind of let me should break. still be before Yang Chi and Branya ulti before. You're right. On the yeah, I don't know why he. I don't know why he did that. Attack and because Branya's ult last based off of how many times the guy, the 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 freaking the unit uses their uh, their ability, not based off of how many times she goes. Let me get Branya up quicker. It is super tricky. Even with that Hanya seeming to be a skill point generator, it's just not enough to reliably cycle through these two characters. Yes, absolutely. We could use the Luocha ultimate here to gain an extra skill point, but that still wouldn't give us enough to use Bronya's skill. Bro is three, bro is really activating. Here. So it's definitely. Oh, it's bro is out here activating his, on his thoughts, bro. And still get enough. Bro's activating uh, his fucking uh, Xavier, bro, from X Men. Composition. Yeah, so it's, it's it's such a torn decision, and I don't know why he's targeting the Trotter when we can, if when on his basic he can attack Yang Ching and uh, generate that skill. I actually, blame the editor on this one, bro. The editor yeah, so could have edited this sure part out. Play is there? Maybe he's going to trigger it with Locha and just trying to get more. He missed out on like 35 energy. Well, that's what I was trying to say earlier. To see oh, you're explaining it to somebody. Is, I get what you're saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah exactly. I don't know that's a lot of energy. Moves ahead. He's thinking on this one, but I'm tipping it's a few. But we can see if we do use the basic, Bronny comes back with the 43 action. So he does go ahead and use the basic on the trotter. And there we go. We have we have got the, the skill points and we get frozen on the Bronya. Now that is, I'm curious to see where that delays her. Into, I mean, with the amount of RNG luck he's had on his side, bro, something was bound to, to happen, man. To boost him in this world. But, I mean, dude, I am just, <laughs> I'm getting stressed on this run. Oh, absolutely. Okay, so he's gonna maybe opt to go for. Is he like running out of juice? Kind of looks like it. Doggos, brother, what the fuck are you pondering about? That Let that bitch fly. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Go and get a combo with Bronya coming up here. But we are still gonna be pretty tight on skill points, especially if we use this Hanya skill here. Okay, um, so we are using it. Yeah, oh, that was okay, clutch by Lord. Trigger it as well. So I think we're not too much. Situation. Unfortunately, Bronya does have to basic, but she is gonna get another turn in this side. Michael, which is super clutch. We're going to get that extra generation here. It's a matter of what he wants to do with the Imbibra Lune uh, because he will act before the Bronya. And <laughs> you, he wants to okay, uh, a, you have no skill points, brother. You have one option, and that is Q, my guy. I need you to Q because right now you got me sitting in a 35 minute Q. All right, I'm queued into this load screen right now, bro. I'm stun locked. I'll have to let it pan out and see Hit the fucking Q. Do, do me a favor, bro. Hit the Q. Team. Yeah, where is that basic attack? <laughs> Holy, bro, and snacking on some fucking hot like Cheetos right now. I know. Bro, so snacking right. He's doing. He's on. Full. Exhibit a one bird combo of ultimate into triple basic. Going right. to be enough Q. to finish off the game. Thirty-one percent HP remains. <laughs> And we do have an inhibitor turn before Bronya goes. Yeah, right, here we go, here we go. Stuff we can do. Holy. So really just an Bro, I'll be honest, that Hanya ult has been massive. Uses the ult. You know, that this, this whole thing kind of just showed me how like, balanced Hanya this actually whole, is. This whole entire showcase. Crazy. Well, so we like, can trigger that it just looks yeah, like she's yeah, perfectly yeah, balanced. They should be able to finish that off. Easy money. It's like for a unit that gives you more skill points. He has three skill points. That's not a five star. It can be easy, but it has to be difficult. That's six skill points in total. Bronya brings him back ggs like bro able Bronya to use her skill the only other there we go come on bro, bro get it out get yep as well. it don't take that long my guy i'd be using the Lord holy squeezes. shit Every little bit of damage i can out of this one we're gonna have come on get it in skill point hurry up uh skill here can we come on let it go my guy the ultimate granted my guy from the Bronya let it fly that is going to be enough to get another three enhanced basic attack I completely missed that. that. That is super clutch. There it is. The you got to slow it down when you do that, though. It does. Nice. Oh, Beautiful run. One cycle. One cycle. All right. Here we are with right. team one side. So two. I got Acheron and E0 gotcha with a signature light comb. With the team of Acheron. We're gonna have to do the uh Pella, the tally up for me. Pella with resolution shines as a pearl. Team. What concerns do you have with this one, Grimro? 
well for me Vulcan. the only concern i really Kafka have free to play bill e0 sam is going to take this my guy just smoke relax though we're going to come down Jepard, to how defense my free to play bill universal trend Jepard and how good he is at keeping up those shields at all right so what i want to talk to you guys about is first of all we got to tally this up we got to tally this up real quick smack Acheron is four points then we have pella who's 0.5 points Three. Then we have Kafka, who's just two points. She has a free-to-play build, so that's six. So we're at 6.5. Then we have Japard, who's two points. 7.5, 8.5. My team investment is 8.5 points. EO's nine. I'm 8.5. Minus 30, 12.5. You know what this means, guys? We save ourselves two cycles because divided by six, see that? We save ourselves two cycles here. So two cycles are saved. All right, now we can go ahead and get into this. My Acheron was a slow Acheron. If I had the right build, I would have made her go twice, but I didn't have the build for her to go fast enough to go twice. The biggest problem with my team composition, you guys, is I don't have anybody in the team to amplify the speed of the team, except if I put a hacker space four piece set on Japard, it still wouldn't have closed the gap. So the weakness of this team was the fact that I had no speed manipulation. So I had to make sure yeah. every single one of these units could go twice outside of Acheron. At all times. Yeah, definitely. And hopefully we do have the burn cone on him so that he can keep applying those burns, giving Acheron stacks. But we do have a very solid team. Solid two RNG there, Acheron two stacks. Two Universal years. trend on Japard gave my Acheron two stacks because they hit Japard twice. Stacks, cut, and cut, we did just get a stack on that AOE. Open up one turn Acheron Pella ult. Why not like shred on everyone's heads? Another door. That's the only debuff that that can make my Acheron stronger on this team. So there's no need to like or 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 once nine crimson nine oh, like on everyone's heads, 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 pop off. Love to see so, this. 90K, I that makes sense. K, K, Why do you put Gepi in the middle? <laughs> Skill issue. Into the 555. Is that easy? Misplay. 5K. Gotcha smack fucking sucks. Straight away, wasting. What the fuck is this guy? Is he a is he a real thing? He's not a real Hawkeye Star Rail player, is he? No time. So he's not a real Hawkeye Star Rail player. In that damage, I don't care how long. Ah! Ah! I didn't even so notice that, bro. He go pull left. Keep it with you, brother. Didn't Absolutely. even notice. This is a badass unit, no questions about it. And the question is. Remember, I do that shit all the time as well, because like, I'm so used to keeping the tents on the side. So call this no one else dies. Yes, auto attack with her. Like that early game. Real quick. Instead of thinking, like, oh yeah, there needs to be on the side, so I rank his damage. Minus 4k. One day. But it doesn't look like she needs it. No, and I just wanted to make note of that really nice basic attack used by Acheron to proc the additional follow-up by Kafka to activate her ult. It was the energy she needed, and I thought that was a great play. Yeah, so I, I didn't skill with Acheron because I saw that uh, Kafka had her passes up, passive up. Volk is pretty meticulous a uh, player. Um, so I autoed with uh, Acheron so that Kafka could then follow up, give her an extra Nihility debuff, and then it filled Kafka's ult up, allowing her to ult and break shield. So it was really nice. But Vulcan, I'm telling you guys, I, try, I told you all this every tournament. Vulcan tries to pretend like he's a casual, but bro is 100% a hardcore gamer. Uh, to use that basic just purely for that synergy. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So we do have an Acheron ultimate almost available here, but Sam is already going in on this team. Pella is at half health, and I'm not seeing a Japan ultimate so, anywhere on side. No, Japan is lagging in the energy, so we're just going to have... <laughs> this is 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 actually an L. I would have preferred these nine stacks to be on Sam for more damage, but it is what it is. Lean on the damage and see what we can do. Looks like he's trying to take care of the ad uh, uh, to not get. The reason I didn't stress about it, guys, is because one cycling with this team was near impossible with the investment that I have on it. Get the break with the Chapard, so we're going straight to the Sam, hitting him with that skill. I did make another misplay though. I'll point it out. Dots, nothing crazy, straight into the ultimate, and then we're already back around to Akron, sitting at four stacks currently. We do have the robot broken, which is super handy, but keen to see what we can do out of this one. We got a 45k skill, nothing too phenomenal there, but as we start ramping up, I think we will get some nice, nice. out of this next ult with that enemy going down Japard's shield is just so that was the misplay hold up let's go back i've taught people this before and i'm going to teach all that again once sam does this hey skill nothing too this is very important five of these bad boys every time you use a skill 
it takes away a skill to deal damage, by the way, it takes away one of these stacks. Mm -hmm. And if you yep. get rid of all these stacks, it obliterates his shield. And then you get a vulnerability buff. I misplayed by not capitalizing on getting this shit down as fast as possible so that my Acheron's ult can deal maximum damage. This is, I don't think, I still don't think it would have made a difference with my team's investment, but I possibly, maybe, maybe could have saved myself a cycle. And that's a, that's a strong maybe. I still think my team was way too, like, uh, out like this team was not strong but enough as we start ramping up i think we will get some nice damage out of this next ult with that enemy going down Japard's shield so i auto attack there the right now. i he think that auto attack's fine and that is a massive lifeline for this team we, we we do have the reduced healing so the shielding is a good effect but we're rolling straight into this that's why dhil is the best to go against them yeah and 36 yeah so if y'all don't know oh I am in Bybrew Lune, if he does three, if he does his full like charge basic attack. That shit counts as three of those, which is broken. Absolutely. Okay, we are. So, uh, Kafka did a skill right there. Hold on, I missed some stuff. My guys, I was I talking. We'll get some nice damage out of this next ult with that enemy going down. Japard's shield is just around the corner now. He is about to proc it, and Hold that up. is a um... my bad, guys. I went too far, uh, 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 like back. Okay, here we go. Now, did Japard do his stuff? But we're rolling straight into this ultimate with Acheron, getting a hundred. There we go. Yeah, see, look, out. I auto attacked with Japard right there. That shit is so annoying. The, if I would have skilled with Japard, that would have been four stacks remaining. Oh, absolutely. Three okay, stacks remaining. We are burning though, Vulcan. Three so stacks remaining. That shield up at all times here, or we are going to be in trouble. Now, fortunately, Japard puts the shield up here, but it's almost already going to be gone. I mean, here. I wonder if it's because it just didn't know. From Sam. So, right? Like, why wouldn't you? Yeah, like when it's two stacks points. remaining. Dangerous, but I like to see it's just oh. an all-out auto attack. Not fine. Not about anything else except pumping out as much damage as possible. And then I skill with those two. We are going to have the ultimate from Pelo. And he, his shield would have been broken and then my acheron ults when his shield's broken once again maybe you know maybe we could have saved ourselves something and we should be able to get ourselves a big ult do we want to skill with the japan yeah see this ult right here should have been saved after i broke his shield down but like i said i i don't think i would have been able to pull off a one cycle with this team investment into 243k now we have sam below you know i think he's like his coping his break bar remaining Oh, yes. Scale, scale right here is what I should have done. I don't know, I'm making a bunch scale. of excuses. Right, so Two stacks left out up there. Online. Immediately, we do also have Kafka's ultimate here. So the thing I'm looking for now, Vulcan, is can we break this Sam yeah. and turn his fire off so our team stops burning alive? Definitely. So not too bad. I think we are going to be pretty safe with this one. We are going to hit, get hit by the next attack, but we are going to be safe from it. One stack remaining. So bros, bros, yeah, man. I don't know. He's he's at 32% remaining. Uh, to get that up. It's possible, but who knows? If we didn't have that shield, we would have been out of action. Oh, absolutely. So using that skill very strategically on your part is really paying off here. And it does look like we are trying to line up a break here on Sam. Oh, if only we could. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Actually, very that, nice. That was his stacks running out. I think we are what sucks, though, is that shafted by Kafka from now. breaking his yeah, shield. Snow drum is now. It's just about how quick we can get this damage out. Unfortunately, Akron doesn't matter. Doesn't we ended up finishing. Turn until just after the next cycle. So we're not going to be able to do it this cycle. But I am seeing a possible. Is it two cycle clear we're up to? We'll put it on the screen at the end. But Black Swan sure is 100% better than Kafka in this situation. Dominate. Oh, but oh not even close. Yeah, I was wondering. Yeah. Not even close. Black Swan's way better than Kafka on this team. It's gonna be enough to take that 23% here, along with Kafka's move. No, oh, just sure there it is and the explosion Vulcan got bamboozled the pig into the dot tick got it yeah you're right I was got about the dot attention to the stacks and we get it done no so, me and EO's five cycles when we throw in the the, the point system right here is actually a three cycle clear right so uh undercover brothers three cycle clear by the point system by the point system you guys okay so now we're on destiny we're gonna add up all of her points and then we'll be able to see what their total investment was but off the top of, of my head we already see signature light con on black swan signature light con on silver wolf signature light con on acheron and scooby-doo does not have a signature light cone down there okay so off the top we're already at four 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 that's 12 points off the top all right here we go with our final contestant team two side two we have moon running the team of acheron black swan silver wolf and it's crazy Once how again, this side we do have he still like doesn't have like a name now things it's like this new york moon 
which is funny. E1 Silver Wolf and that E1 Black Swan bumps things up a notch. Oh, yes. Let's come back over here to the point system. Yeah, bro, she came to the point. Uh, got so we got, we got Black Swan, eight That's points like in total because of the E1. Like Silver Wolf, eight it's points crazy. in total because of the E1 and Signature Light Cone. And then we have four points from uh, Acheron. And then we have two points from Scooby-Doo. That's going to total 22 points, 38.5 points in total. <laughs> 38.5 points by the point system, guys. That's four cycles subtracted. No, not subtracted. Added on to their total <laughs> clear time. Being a well doesn't pay off. It doesn't. It really doesn't, bro. And I, I had told them about this beforehand, but when you add that shit up, we actually won by a mile. And I, and I want to be clear here. I still think their, their runs were fantastic, by the way, but you do need to be careful with these investments. Doggo's got a one cycle and Destiny got a one cycle. But I want to be, be clear here, guys. These two E1s are, are very deserving of the points. This, I've told y'all plenty of times, Silver Wolf's E1 is a fucking game changer for Silver Wolf. She has the worst energy recharge problems at E0 for her ult. Once you unlock her E1, the bitch ults every other turn. And, it, and that's massive for implying stacks for Acheron to ult. It's huge. Then, if that wasn't enough, Black Swan's E1 is one of the most broken E1s in the entirety of the game. It rivals Ron May's ignored defense 20%, and it's even worse because black swans e run e1 as long as they're of inflicted by the dot of the element that person gets a all type res pin essentially so both her and acheron are benefiting from her e1 as well as anybody else on the team who has a dot on them so if they are inflicted with a lightning dot or a wind dot guess what all type res pin obliterated on top of acheron's all type res pin from her ultimate then you got her defensive ignoring. Then you have her signature light cone defensive ignoring too. So these two are very fucking strong buffs. And, and that's and that's so important to point out. Silver Wolf's res pin too. You're I mean, right. Yeah. Silver Wolf also has like all type res pin. So look, all type res well, pin. Silver Wolf, all type res pin Black Swan. And then all type yep. res pin Acheron. Then Silver Wolf Light Cone, 12% increased damage received, which is equivalent to all type res pin as well on the multipliers. So there's a it's lot of your, damage like, in this seems. investment, which is why I completely think the point system is valid for this. Like, I'm just popping these people are saying that, like, oh yeah, they lost. Uh -huh. They're like wars. Now you've done this, well, so we can like explain what happened. I'll show you guys where that value comes in. Video, so. So. 57% res pin for Akron. It's, it's fucking insane. For fast breaking on him to minimize if I post this on YouTube, I never see that. I'm just joking. I'm sure he's fine. All right, so but it's just like. So it's funny. she's already oh, done like so uh, Silver Wolf's skill defensive. and then Acheron, I mean not Acheron, Black Swan skill, defensive shred, and then Silver Wolf's light cone plus her all type res pin has already activated. Of debuffs to apply with this team, so Thank you, Necro. We are lacking a preservation unit that can apply the extra debuffs through the burn cone, but I think with the rest... So, Acheron, or I keep saying Acheron, God damn it. Backshot Swan, ult's already up. That's crazy. That, that's due to Destiny's five head building, by the way. Backshot Swan. The rest of this team, we're going to have no issues getting one extra damage, two extra breaks, oh, that's a ult? and then extra stacks out of this Akron. So I th hey, uh, Teeny, thank you for the prime sub. I appreciate it. Sue and Teeny just Guys, subscribe. I want to talk to y'all about this. The Black Swan ult just triggered the E1 passive of Black Swan that I was telling y'all about. So now Akron has that all type res pen think it's a very synergistic team and as long as we do have enough healing out of this uh ho -ho, we should be pretty fine uh, obviously so that damage you're looking at already off rip the the shit i was telling y'all about is already inflating those numbers significantly the energy going amiss because we don't need it on acheron but still going to be huge on the silver wolf who do, does i would not break that a little gap in her energy regeneration which can maybe get made up for by the ho -ho. Oh, absolutely. Very interesting to see this Acheron is a very fast Acheron compared to Gotcha Smack Slow Acheron. So it'll be curious to see which one ends up being a little bit stronger here. Well, it, it, you, that'd be an unfair comparison. You can't because of all the investment. So you can't say... Yeah, it's like that's almost that's almost pointless to make with respect, you know. And it's gonna be really critical, it seems, from this team. Wait, I'm wait he's actually like get another Acheron ultimate. He's gonna leave a friend of mine. See, that, that there. <laughs> 
That there. Dude, he's like, that is E1 Black Swan, bro. So that funny. is a hundred percent the power of E1 Black like the Swan and, and 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 so Wolf's Light Cone combined. Team, which I'm seeing Vulcan. It's because they're they're now, I'll, I'll be honest. Even regular Black Swan probably might still kill this person. Probably. But this one, this next dot. Look at this next dot. I want to show y'all this one. This he would have still been alive if this was my Black Swan. This is what. This is E1 Black Swan, bro. Because every single dot has her all type res pin, bro. Every single one of those dots. And look, guys, this is before the break. Look, 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 look. Her her dot hasn't occurred yet. Her dot's about to occur here at the end. Look, look, look. Space to see. Dang. <laughs> so you gotta take it into consideration that all type res pin on every single dot on the character is insanity. You take all that off. And now he has another turn and he's forced to probably use his Acheron. Oh, or he, I'm, I'm sorry, she. I'm used to saying he because, you know, male, males fucking play a lot of goddamn games. Anyways, she would be forced to use the ult. How much damage it deals and we get it done easily. Okay, and we've got the now, ult. Now, now the next thing, the next thing that's so important to pay attention to. Watch this Silver Wolf ult. Watch her, watch her, watch her battery down here. This is E1 Silver Wolf. You ready for the power of E1 Silver Wolf? Watch her fucking old meter. Ready from Silver Wolf, straight up, putting the damage into Sam, not worrying about waiting. <laughs> Look at this shit, bro. That shit is crazy, bro. Straight to half, bro. Oh my God, dude. That's E1 Silver Wolf. And this is what I'm saying. People be trying to argue with me when I'm like, Silver Wolf sucks at E0. Silver Wolf sucks with E0. Silver Wolf's the most pay to win limited character in the game because all of her shit is sold to you through her Eidolons. I don't be lying to y'all when I say this shit, guys. I'm okay, always cooking. Application. We're just going straight in for it. And this silver That's what the power of Silver Wolf's E1. And it perpetuates. By the time we do have access to his break bar anyway. And we do have that extra weakness applied. So we are set to break this guy if we need to. And getting some big damage out of that Akron with another 314k. There we go. So look. One Silver Wolf's ult's about to be up. Control. Thanks She's to her E1. As much damage as Before she even goes control. again. Also That's what's crazy. Look incredible. at this. Yes, and Booyah. Ooh, that's bad RNG. If he would have hit Silver Wolf, her ult would have been up again. I'm definitely taking some damage. But so Scooby Doo's gonna to fix that problem. Okay. Now I admit, this Scooby Doo was a five head play by by Destiny. Five head. I would never put Scooby Doo on this team, but she put her on the team specifically to battery Black Swan and Silver Wolf, which is insane. Insane. I was gonna say, we looks like we weren't gonna use the skill there for a second. I was oh, gonna be worried. I don't know why it's saying, but we are very yeah. safe now. We've this was such a good, up. good play by her. Off. We got Silver Wolf's ult ready to go as well, opting straight into it. Maybe for. But look at this, guys. Look, you ready for this? Watch, watch, watch her, watch her shit. You ready for this shit? I didn't know. Look at Silver Wolf's meter. Does have another look. turn? Doesn't take a turn to. <laughs> that shit is like a magic trick, bro. <laughs> That shit is so crazy, man. Anyway, so we do get to general. Like no cooldown, guys. Literally no fucking cooldown on it, bro. Just yeah, just here you go. Here's half your energy back. We're pretty safe on that one. Absolutely. Gonna go ahead and use that black swan ultimate here. Really stacking up the arcanas. Yeah, like I mean there's really no much to Do y'all see what I mean I'm now by why the point system's valid? It's valid the for this no, type no, of shit because that's so attack, strong, though. man. Attack, that's so strong. Just like, she kind of has like the all them debuffs being applied, applied some skill points. So for Akron's old, the defensive shred 100% uptime, both enemies and shit. Doesn't have to use her skill here. Or maybe we are planning on the necessity to use a whole focus skill to heal uh is what we were lining up no we're using another basic okay we're up to four skill points so we're Ooh, perfectly dirty. fine on skill points and we're gonna be start taking some damage with that black swan here yes but we do have the acron ultimate available the question is going to be do we want to use it immediately or are we going to save it up for later like and i'm also a little bit concerned here. about this wah -wah. Mm -hmm. does I she have so. enough healing output to counter sam's massive healing debuff that he does on the team and here there we, we go. go with that ultimate going into what a 500k ultimate getting the pop on the trotter getting some massive dot damage in there as well and even if we lose a unit here we're gonna be pretty safe in my opinion uh we are at three stacks currently uh even if we take a bit of health damage we should be fine we will get the ultimate yeah I believe, some is nice here on the silver wolf after this skill but you got to decide what you want to do because Ho is going to run out of her buff so she will want to skill 
Okay, we are saving it for the Fofo. Hopefully, we don't get dropped here. Getting straight into those ultimates from the damage taken, which is... Dude, that, the, the amount of Silver Wolf ult there. is actually, absolutely wild. After the Silver Wolf, getting a good chunk of damage in. And where are we at? He's at time. But this is what I was trying to tell y'all, guys. Like, this is why I say Silver Wolf is not that good at E0. I, I, literally, it's because of the, what you're seeing right now at, at her E1 state. Her E1 state is a night and day fucking difference from her E0 state. Non-existent break bar, and I think we're pretty <coughs> safe to get it here. We're at eight stacks on the Akron, and we have a Black Swan turn coming up. So I think that is going to be enough to get our ultimate and get the job done in this cycle. Absolutely. What an incredible run. The absolute. All right. And, you know, it's off, finishing off, it off with Akron in alive, style. Akron is going to bring us home for a ridiculously fast clear here, Vulcan. <laughs> All right. There we go. Nice little over the kill on that one, too. One cycle clear. Okay, what wonderful showing from both teams. Oh, yet I mean, dude, that's kind of crazy. This, guys, because the difference is one cycle. The point system, oh. And you'll come to find out. That they're three, they're uh, our five cycle clear. About all I need to say about equals that. a three cycle oh, yeah. clear because we stayed over, uh, we stayed under 12 points under the 30 point system. Their two cycle clear is actually going to equal, what is it, a, a six cycle clear due to that point system. Hopefully, y'all had a, a good time watching me like analyze this shit and like, you know, shed some light on all of the insight. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys on the flip side. Oh, yeah, there you go. So, the things that you can learn from that kind of. And just, so one Hanya is like really balanced. So, like, you really need to know how to use her. If you do want to use her. Akron is OP, no matter what. I mean, I managed to get zero cycle. And it was even like hard. Dan Hang, he's still OP. And uh, nothing has changed with that really. And the Blade and Yu Kong. I feel like in a tournament, right, so where, like, you get to pick, and then you have to do it straight after, right? I don't think Yukong is the best thing, because it's just too much. Too many things need to go right. So, and I don't think it's worth it. I think... Yeah, I mean, Tingin was, like, taken away, so I don't know who you could take, but... Who could you replace Yukong with in that position? From the picks and bans? Well, actually, let me... Yeah, that's, that's funny. Wait, where's the actual pick and bands? Because I want to look at them. So we don't have... Ramid, Tingyun... So who else could you use? Instead of Yukong. I know, like, Yukong was really strong. But, like, sometimes they may just not be worth it. To be honest. I mean, I don't have anyone else. It's just Asta, really. Weird one. Okay, team, what is locking in our Stellaron Hunters of Tafta and Blade here? A very, very strong and interesting. Also, maybe Kafka was picked too early. Maybe they could have secured something maybe else. Maybe they're going to pick Tafta with Acheron. I absolutely love this pick. I love seeing all three Stellaron hunt, original Stellaron Hunters come out at once. Kafka definitely strong, especially with the Trotters in this one. Right, that's going to get some extra mileage out of that. All right, so we've got a Bronya and Loja pick up here for Team 2. Picking up that last... Yeah, maybe they could have done this. They could have taken Bronya instead of Kafka and take Kafka later. Because I don't think they will pick... Premium pick Harmony them. unit here. And of course, grabbing one of the best healers in the game. Loach is super safe in these draft modes as well. The guy just does what he needs to do every time. So fantastic pickup. And obviously, missing out on Sparkle. They got the other booster in Bronya before. So maybe we are teeing up to... Yeah, you see that they took Yukon. Yeah, definitely they could have taken Bronya earlier. See some more of that action. Okay, team two are interested in picking up another five-star healer here in Hua Hua, playing it a bit safe here, and also grabbing Hanya, presumably for that inhibitor, to help a little bit out with skill point generation. Yeah, nah, and in this position, I still think Yukong is better than Hanya. Really solid sustained roster here, and I don't need the skill really points. Like the and she doesn't do enough, like, lot of sense, like you said, PS. With okay, mm -hmm. and team one are going to round out their composition here, picking up... Hmm. 